Hello class, my name is Fernando Rodriguez. Hello Dr. Macon. Um, the unit I had to discuss for this video lecture is unit 4. It deals with the book Code on the Street, of the Street. And uh, the underlying theme there is uh, social disorganization theory. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, uh, we must look at a little bit of the history of these theories and how they came to be, or how they became popularized. So before the 1930s, there was a lot of theories that, um, that depended on biological factors, such as physical and mental ones, that deemed an individual, well, the individual was born with them, and that made him, uh, as the books, as the Agnew books state, um, organically inferior. So they had to be incapacitated because they were a danger to the public. So as the 1930s come along, um, cities start, and you know it's time of the industrial area, and like cities start to expand. There's a lot more commerce and such, and. Uh, sociologists start looking at different ways to study crime. Now, um, this theory, particularly social disorganization theory, um, started in the city of Chicago. Mostly, uh, this theory focuses on neighborhood traits as opposed to individual traits as uh, biological theories. Um, were focused on and the people who are given mostly all the credit for this theory are Clifford Shaw and Henry McKay. They both worked at the Institute for Social Research in Chicago. However, the people who pretty much started the, this type of theoretical thinking were uh, Robert Park and Ernest Burgess. They theorized that urban areas grew through a process of continual expansion from inner city core uh, to an outward core. And uh, social disorganization has a very basic definition. It is when um, social institutions within a neighborhood, in this case, are broken, thus having, so then the individuals in those neighborhoods have no uh, stable uh, ties and there's just disorganization all around um, but first let's get to looking at Burgess's um, zone theory so as I stated before this theory states that you know that there's an inner core which is called a central business district or industrial area which is right here in the center as you can see by my cursor and then uh, it starts moving outward from this inner core all the way this way. So you have the central business district and then right outside of that in this vibrant green color uh, you can see that there's the transition zone or zone of transition. This is where impoverished newcomers settle because they're attracted by uh, factory jobs which uh, these are the factories just in case you didn't know the, the ones in blue. And so they're close to uh, their place of work, and also because there's cheap apartments, uh, they live here. And um, right outside of that, you start seeing less um, people being less cramped. You can see it here, like that. There's tons of apartments and such. You know, this is a scale model, I, and I understand that, but it does paint a very good picture of what these zones look like and they're pretty much found in every city um, somewhat um, so once you start this is low income for starters the transition zone are low income uh, individuals who live here then you get to this gray area as you can see people are not as cluttered up this is more middle class or as uh, the Agnew book states they're the working men's homes and then you start getting into the residential homes or more of the suburbs as we call them nowadays that these areas you know there's a lot of you know a lot of room for people to live in they are um, they are very well off in this area they're mostly high upper class 
uh, individuals who live here. And the commuter zone is just outside of that. You know how people come into the city is the how, how they commute, hence the name commuter zone. Um, so uh, usually the people who live in these transition zones uh, or the factors that affect the, the high crimes in transition zones are uh, high poverty, rapid population growth, uh, heterogeneity, and what heterogeneity is, is that there's people of different backgrounds and cultures and different races who live there. And then finally, transiency. Now, transiency is the rapid influx and outflux of people that live here. So they're in and out fairly quickly. So the combination of all these factors that happened in just this area alone, um, cause instability in the social and their social um, institutions thus causing social disorganization and we will go ahead and continue so Sean McKay Sean McKay were greatly influenced influenced by Burgess's theory they found that characteristics of the area and not of the individuals living in the area regulated levels of delinquency. So as we stated in the transition zone, there's a high uh, crime rate in, the, in these inner city areas. And then um, they also found that, that crime rates were uh, pronounced in the zone of transition, as we stated, and became progressively lower as one moved away from the inner city towards the outer zones. So as you start moving outward, you start seeing less and less uh, crime because people are more uh, collectively ethical, if, um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, we'll go ahead and, con and we'll go ahead and continue. Now, the code of the street. The code of the street was written by Elijah Anderson. It has a very vivid and detailed example of Burgess's zones. And I will go ahead and retrace back to this um, picture because uh, the book talks about Germantown Avenue and how it pretty much crosses through all these zones. It's like an eight mile long avenue. And then you, how you can start seeing like the different zones manifest as you start moving inward in this case. In the book, first it starts out in this residential uh, area, which is wood, which is called Chestnut Hill. This is where um, upper class people live. They have a higher standard of living. They have big houses, trees and lawns, you know, so they have a fairly amount, a good amount of land. There's mostly white uh, educated people who live here. Uh, and then you start seeing more people outside, you know, that they're comfortable in the situation that they're in. They're not afraid of anything happening in this area. And there's more classy restaurants, so on and so forth. Now, as we move inward, uh, Anderson talks about Mount Airy, which is Airy, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, that is the more middle class area, low to middle class. Like once you start reaching the transition zone, it's still kind of low income people. And then once you start reaching this way, it's more medium income in individuals. I know this is just a scale model, but it does uh, um, convey my point pretty, pretty decently. Um, so in this area, you start seeing uh, a mix of black and white people. And they're more middle class, as we stated. Um, the youth uh, starts gathering more outside, but not in a illegal activity, like in an illegal activity type of way. Um, there's more uh, pizza parlors, takeout, like takeout food restaurants, healthcare centers, discount stores as you start moving inward. Mostly discount st stores as you start moving inward. Then. We start getting into this area pretty much where it's, it starts to merge with the transition zone. In this area, you start seeing old buildings that they're poorly restored. Uh, you start seeing some buildings with uh, riot gates and bars over the windows. 
um, you start seeing more uh, cops, you know, surrounding, you know, surveilling the neighborhoods. And then you finally reach the transition zone, which in this case is Germantown itself. And in Germantown, you know, there's mostly segregated black people, as the book states. Uh, they are low income. They are dressed with baggy clothes, trying to emulate, you know, uh, Tupac or any... I mean, it's, it's, it's a style, I guess. I wouldn't say Tupac, but um, as a person of the street, like, that's what the book refers to, like Tupac or any other famous rapper at the time. Um, and then here, almost all buildings, pretty much all the buildings are boarded up. They have riot uh, gates. They have bars over the windows. And uh, then there's the central business district, which is unaffected. You have the factories, and then you have the commerce and business center in this, in the very, um, very center of this uh, model. So we'll go ahead and move back to where we were. So we already talked about how the book um, pretty much relates to Burgess's zones. Now, the book also talks about people and how they are labeled. Now, people in, uh, in the book are labeled as either decent or street. Now, these uh, labels are used by the residents of, inner, of the inner city communities, which are in the, tra in the transition zones, uh, to categorize themselves and one another um, in order to understand um, I guess what side you're on would be a good way to say it. Um, and then we start to take a look at them individually. So decent people, we talk about decent uh, families, um, they have a very positive outlook on life and they want, you know, to have good goals for their children. They want to get their children out of these transition zones. They have they want to build a good life. They want to have something for themselves. Uh, and it, they also instill, as the book states, like a backbone in their children, uh, a sense of responsibility for the youth, you know, that they should um, save money. Um, they should save money, work hard, you know, uh, raise children if and uh, be a good role model uh, and this is usually done even though like in the, these areas there's little uh, collective efficacy due to the high crime rates and and people moving in and out so quickly um, there's still people people who have uh, who allied themselves like the decent people allied themselves with um, institutions such as schools churches and obviously they have their family support and usually they have a role model to look after to look up to which is the man of the house so usually decent families and decent people in the neighborhood have um, a father in their lives so that they can instill this these values that I've previously have talked about you know being a good breadwinner a good provider and uh, keeping their kids in the right track, per se. Now, when we start to like to take a look at people from the street, um, they tend to live in disorganization. They thrive in it. But one can also say that they just have their priorities mis like misplaced or misaligned, because they tend to uh, value more, um, you know, drugs. Uh, uh, buying liquor, cigarettes, and such, or selling selling those uh, particular items. The uh, the parents or the street parents in quotation street uh, they have a lack of consideration for other people, and they have a very super superficial sense of family and community. Now they might love their children, but they find it difficult to cope with physical and emotional demands of parenthood. So even though the children, you know, they love their children, they find it difficult to fully invest themselves in into them and instill the values that we talked about for people who are decent. 
Um, most of the people in the inner city community um, that are decent see these people of the street as um, as low lives, as bad people, because uh, they are the ones that are bringing their community or their neighborhood down. They uh, have a lot of self-destructive behavior, and uh, that causes a lot of harm to others. And usually they have no role models as like as a father, particularly a father role model to instill all these uh, values that we previously talked about. So the book has many accounts of personal accounts of of people from the street and decent people. Like there was one for decent individuals that uh, this lady, her her children had new equipment because baseball equipment, and a couple of kids from the street like asked to borrow them, like borrow the the equipment, and the kids said yes, and then the mom the mom pretty much stated like, uh, you know you're never gonna see your things again, so uh, later on she tried to talk to the mother of those kids, and you know to try to come to a peaceful solution and the mother of those other kids would be classified more as street because she right away started cursing at her and the mother of the kids whose stuff got taken away she was shocked but she did something this book talks about that is very fascinating which is called code switching and code switching is that you have your values and your um, ties to society like uh, you have them on right like you know what you want to do, you know, you want to get out of these neighborhoods, so on and so forth, but you know that that has no value on the street, so what you what you do is you switch, you switch to a street personality and try to, you know, get that self-respect as well so that people won't mess with you. So that's what that lady did. She started cursing back at the other lady and, you know, just to show that she wasn't weak. Uh, and other examples of uh, street people um, that come out in this book uh, are like people who were out and about doing chores and then there were small children playing on tricycles and bikes and down the block and a young man cried out saying like give me drugs and then the well give me drugs bitch where are my drugs at and stuff like that and that pretty much brings down the whole reputation and the whole um, outlook on that neighborhood because of all these um, people on the street that do drugs and sell drugs so on and so forth so in conclusion social disorganization theory applies to the code of the street because the communities and particularly the uh, street uh, the people who are classified as street communities or in, in those neighborhoods, they're marked by poverty, heterogeneity, residential transiency, and family disruption particularly uh, affects them the most. So their informal relations and controls are weakened. So they have um, no capacity to regulate conduct and suppress cr criminal behavior and not that they would want to because they are part of the problem but um, not everybody in the, in the streets are are bad um, there's the decent people they are they are able to uh, volunteer and participate in neighborhood organizations uh, they help their friends um, particularly through uh, church uh, their church community, their school community, because they want a better life. Uh, they want to move out of the transition zones more into the working men's homes and residential homes. And they are particularly able to uh, group collectively and in order to um, achieve their desired outcomes if need be. So 
they can achieve uh, informal control over their situation, you know, and because obviously like policies and stuff uh, don't really work in those areas. Um, so uh, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, these are my references. Yeah, I use the Agnew and Cullen book, Past or Present, and then the, uh, Elijah Anderson's book, Code of the Street. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to send me a message. Uh, I'm going to, I hopefully, if everything goes well, this will be posted on YouTube uh, right away. And if there's any troubles with the, with the link, someone please let me know. Thank you so much, and thank you for an uh, amazing class.